Hey everybody, welcome to the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI. So how will the practice of medicine change this decade? We're going to talk about that right now. So I don't know how much you guys are aware of this, but right now there is a serious shortage of doctors and nurses in general and a critical shortage in rural areas. While most people these days live in or near cities, there's still a substantial rural population to be taken care of. So new innovative methods need to be introduced into healthcare to manage both urban and rural patients, but also to help out with this doctor and nurse shortage. So one of the things that has been discussed in the press a lot lately is how to change the delivery of healthcare. Telehealth means a video meeting with your doctor, and that was largely prohibited and not covered by health insurance until the pandemic. Well, that changed everything in that respect. But doctors can still only do so much and see so many patients a day. Another thing that's been going on is this huge uptick in people with chronic health conditions like diabetes or heart issues. So how do doctors and nurses manage people with these chronic issues without them having to constantly come to the doctor's offices? Interwearables. So there's two broad categories of wearables that measure things about your body. One is consumer grade and the other is medical grade. But the line between those is starting to blur significantly. Why? Because the big consumer wearables like the Apple Watch, Fitbit, the Aura Ring, which I wear, and or the Google equivalent will monitor many, many aspects of your life now. How you sleep, your heart rate, your body temperature, a, a bunch of stuff, your breathing. So there's this particular article on healthcare, courtesy of ID TechX, says, what is widely discussed now, healthcare systems around the world are being put under increasing strain each year. Key challenges they face include overburdened medical staff and a steady rise in the patients with chronic health conditions. Digital health has long been proposed as a solution to these problems. The question remains as to how the world will shift more permanently to this new form of healthcare delivery. So I talked about telehealth a minute ago. Another kind of digital health is called remote patient monitoring, and that's the wearables. RPM, remote patient monitoring, can be a key to helping healthcare systems optimize the deployment of medical staff. The developments in medical sensors are advancing the range of health conditions that can mo be monitored from home via RPM. Companies developing patient monitoring hardware and programs are at varying degrees of commercialization. So there's companies, in addition to the consumer wearables, that are specifically developing medical-grade patient monitoring. A technology trend that is enabling the rise of RPM is the continuing improvement of consumer wearable technology and the movement toward medical applications. Wearable technology provides continuous monitoring of health conditions. The line between consumer devices and medical devices is continuing to blur with consumer wearable devices offering an increasing number of highly relevant health sensing capabilities. Highly relevant to medicine, they mean. The key to digital health is software. Significant progress has been made in bringing software as a medical device to the market. Several digital therapies have received regulatory approval for reimbursement worldwide. Key areas for software as a medical device are mental and behavioral health. And I've done separate videos on all of the apps now that can be used for psychological counseling. Some of those are medically approved for reimbursement. With the ability to drive healthy behaviors, digital health apps are also applicable to managing chronic conditions and improving overall well-being. Because these devices detect 
so quickly when something is wrong. A separate type of software as a medical device that has emerged is the use of image recognition AI for application on medical imaging for diagnostic. And I've done other videos on that of AI being better able than humans to read x-rays, MRIs, and things like that. The use of software has multiple benefits, including both helping overburdened doctors as well as enabling early diagnosis. So what are they really saying here? Because <laughs> I like to get to that and the human impact of AI. In the very near future now, because of rapid advances on multiple levels each year with these types of devices, what will happen is that you will consent for your doctor to receive all of your data or it being batched <laughs> that they can basically look at and tell you everything that's going on with you without you having to actually come to the doctor. Take the annual physical, for example. Each annual physical appointment takes roughly an hour and an eight hour workday for a doctor. Even if they spend nine hours seeing patients working a 10 hour day with an hour off, those routine preventative care appointments that they call them annual physical takes up a very significant portion of their time. What if you never had to go to the doctor anymore for that kind of evaluation? Why? Because the doctor can get an entire year worth of data from your Aura Ring, your Apple Watch, your Google Watch, your Fitbit, whatever, and know every single thing that's going on with you. And as the AIs that support these wearables get better and better and better, they are beginning to identify a whole bunch of things, right? For women now, for example, they can tell you exactly what your day of ovulation is to help you get pregnant. I recently got a message from Aura that they believe that their data allows them to predict now that you have a certain disease, and I forgot what it was, but it's something that's relatively rare and usually would not be caught in a physical. So this kind of technology is developing so quickly and its reliability is getting so good that very soon it's likely that you will not have to go for routine physicals anymore, that you'll only go for sick visits. That alone will free up a huge amount of doctor time because a sick visit appointment is 15 to 30 minutes versus a whole hour for a physical. So that way the doctor can see many more people and your annual physical goes to a video visit of 15 minutes, unless something's wrong. So digital technology will greatly help the doctor and nurse shortage. But that said, one of the things that we talk about all the time here on the AI Guide is careers that are relatively safe from AI. Well, being a general family doctor or internist or a nurse are professions that will last much longer than other professions. Why? Because the human touch is required. And people don't want to hear about the detection of an illness from an AI. They want to know that they're talking to a person when they get the news of heart disease or cancer or diabetes. That's a particularly human moment. So those careers are going to last, but, and certainly they are hiring a lot of people still for those jobs. But due to the shortage that exists today, they need help. And these digital technologies that people wear all day, every day, that are now affordable and many people are wearing them, will revolutionize healthcare. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe. Also, please share these videos with your friends and support us on Patreon. Five or ten bucks makes a huge difference. The Patreon link is below. Please help support this channel. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.